This video demonstrates two different ways of making labs. Uh, lactic acid bacteria serum. It's an amazing amendment for soil. It's a good foliar spray for plants. It's a probiotic for plants. And it can colonize the leaf surfaces with you know probiotic bacteria so that the pathogenic bacteria can't get a foothold. There's a load of, um, a load of data to support the use of this stuff. It's uh, you know well documented as having a hugely beneficial um, effect on soil life. It's wonderful stuff. Um, it's also one of the base preparations for doing a whole load of other uh, bio amendments and so on. This is one of the, the, the core base uh, materials. There's two ways of doing it that we use. This is the one that you can use just with store cupboard materials very easily. Um, it's really, really straightforward. It's just a bowl of rice. And we're going to add some dechlorinated water to that. Uh, we haven't got a fancy filter or anything. I've just boiled the water so that all the chlorine evaporates off. And uh, another way is just to leave it standing for a couple of days. But uh, it's, yeah, just let it boil, let it cool off, and then just it's good for this. So I'm just washing the rice in it basically. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get some of the starches off the surface of the rice. Uh, you can see a little bit cloudy already. Uh, we don't have to worry about inoculating it with lactobacillus. It's on everything. Um, you know like when you make um, sauerkraut, you don't have to use an inoculant. It's just already on the surface of the cabbage. This is pretty much the same. Um, it's already on the surface of the rice just from being grown in the field. It's, uh, you know, lactobacillus is everywhere. It's one of the constants. So, you can see that's picked up a little bit of cloudiness. That's exactly what I'm after. So at this point, I'm just going to pour some of that into a thing. I'm likely to make a mess here. Here we go. So let's pour that into a jar. Ah, it's not too bad. There we go. So... That now I'm just going to leave. I'm not even going to close it completely. I'm just going to close it too like that. Actually, there's a grain of rice gone in there. So I'm going to pull them out before I do it. But I'm going to leave that now for a week, maybe a bit longer. Um, it's not absolutely critical, but you need to leave it long enough so for the lactobacillus to really go to work on the starches that have come off the rice. Uh, really start to break it down and breed and duplicate. So we get ourselves a really nice uh, lactobacillus starter culture. Uh, when that happens, it gets um, a kind of sweetish kind of odour to it. Um, I've never had a batch of this fail, so it's it's really simple to do. As I say, because it's already inoculated with lactobacillus, it stops anything else getting a foothold generally. If there's any sort of unpleasant smell to it, get rid of it and start again. But it should work perfectly easily as long as you, you know, I mean, these are just been, these aren't sterile or anything. These have just been, used, you know, um, washed up in normal uh, washing up water, same as everything else. So, yeah, at that point I leave it for five, seven days, and then uh, we'll come back to it a little bit later. It's been five days since the rice wash was put aside. It's got a slight sweetness to it, and there's a little bit of cloudiness to it, so we're ready for the next stage. So I need 200 milliliters of the rice wash water. That'll do. I mean, roughly is good enough with this. It's uh, yeah, there's so many variables in there in terms of you know, the strength of the water and so on that I don't worry about the detail. So it's 200 mils of the rice wash water, and to that I'm going to add two liters of whole full fat milk. So we're looking at roughly a 10%. There we go, that's up to two liters. So at that point, we just leave this alone until it separates out into the curds and the whey. And that'll take roughly five days, depending on the um, temperature. But uh, yeah, no, that's the thing with using a clear jar like this is you can really see you know, the, the clear division when it happens. It saves having to you know, poke down it or bowl and so on. So we'll leave that until that separation takes place. So it's been about seven days uh, since it was put into the milk and you can see how it's all separated off. We've got the uh, cheese curds at the top and a little bit at the bottom and then the whey 
right there in the center. Sometimes it all comes to the surface, sometimes it stays like this. Doesn't matter, it's all the same difference. Now what I could do is just take the curds off the top and use like a turkey baster and extract it that way, but I just tend to do the whole lot in one batch. So I'm going to get a cheesecloth. And this is my not good quality cheesecloth. It's the one I use for all sorts of quality you know, brews and things like that, which is why it's got stains on. And then I'm just gonna dump the whole lot in. and we just let it strain. But because we do this sort of thing quite often, I've got a hanging bolt in the ceiling. There we go. I'll just leave that there. Probably be a couple of hours. Just to finish straining completely. And then I'll come back and I'll bottle it up. And after it's finished, that's it. You can see that's lovely, clear, really nice labs. So that can be kept in the fridge for a while, or you can cut it 50-50 with uh, equal amount of molasses to labs, and it'll keep for, uh, some people tell you, up to six months in the fridge, perfectly fine. I tend to make it that often that I don't really worry about it um, because we're using the stuff anyway. This being the rice wash method, this is the one that's easiest if you're just using stuff straight out of your store cupboard. If you're doing this a lot, I highly recommend going with a different method, and that's the next one. Um, it's a slightly different technique, but it's easier to produce large volume uh, labs really, really quickly with the other one. But also, I don't particularly like this cream cheese, the residue that's left, the curds. With the rice wash method, I just, I don't know, I'm not particularly keen on it. I know people that do eat it, uh, but personally, nah, it's not my thing. Uh, what I do enjoy, though, is the curds from the next method. But the next one uh, is a milk kefir method, so I just take the curds from that, salt them slightly, and that's beautiful. That's a really nice um, uh, lactobacillus-rich uh, cream cheese. You know, it's like a um, really good probiotic um, cream cheese. is beautiful. This is absolutely work for the same thing i just don't like the flavor quite so much it's not quite so sharp but uh yeah for most people this is how that they'll produce uh their uh their first batch of labs but if you want to get really fancy here's the next one this is my milk kefir culture just lives in a jar on the side and i'm going to dump the whole lot into a bowl and that's really at the point of starting to split, so it needed feeding anyway. Let's get as much as we can out. And down in here there are, let's find a reasonable sized one. There we go. Oops. Little kefir grains. And I'm going to top that off with this load of milk. It's not the freshest, you, know, you don't need premium stuff for this, it's just feedstock for microbes. So I'm going to dump all of that in. Just cover that with a cloth. And I'll leave that for probably five or six days. Kefi has been on for about four days. Uh, the last day or so I gave it a little bit of bottom heat just to give it a hurry along because I want this batch. So a couple of spoons over just to stop it from falling in. And you can see that's got a nice bloom on the surface. You can see that's starting to set up. So, oh lovely. So I'm gonna drain that to get the whey but I also want to salvage, actually that's still, there we go. 
out. I want to salvage the grains. So, I've got a little system for doing this. It's really fast. So that separates the curds from the weight. I'll put a colander inside that and then I'll pull that through. Oh yeah, you can see there's plenty of whey there. Right, in fact you can see, oops, where are we? That's one of the kefir grains there. <laughs> so, I'll actually I'll put that in. Oh, is it slippery at all? There we go. So I'll draw this up. Now I can let it go a lot longer than this really. I've let it go like a week, ten days before. You can see there's not very much in terms of grains. That's what those little bits. Yeah. All this is here, like teeny tiny little cauliflower florets. So I'll retain that because that needs to go back into fresh milk. This comes centre stage. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to just knot these two corners. So that's pretty contained. And then because we've got a kitchen that's actually set up for the way we live rather than the generic same conventional kitchen everyone else has got. We've got stainless steel eye bolts in the ceiling. Oh, with a little hole. Come on. There we go. We've got stainless steel eye bolts in the ceiling so that when we want to, we can set things to drain and just attach to a little ratchet and then we can just set that to drain. Oops, there's a little bit of spillage at the end here. There we go. And we just set that to drain. There we go. And uh, let's keep that out of the way. And uh, yeah, that's the There we go. Yeah, that's the uh, the kefir way draining down. And that's it finished. That's one liter of kefir labs. I've still got more coming through. So that's yeah, lactic acid bacteria serum. It's uh, a really useful product. It's good in all sorts of ways, but uh, yeah. My main purpose for it is as a, a first stage into making my own um, EM1, effective microbes. So that'll be another video, but uh, yeah, that's the easiest way that I know of to make lactobacillus serum.